Good morning, everybody. It's Jillian with JillyJuice.com, J-I-L-L-Y-J-U-I-C-E.com. Yeah, I'm getting some people, you know, trying to get into the group. I know people that have blocked me in my group or trying to add their friends. Not going to happen. They have to get a hold of me with the receipt of the $9 ebook or the paperback. Um, people are coming back because they know how severe this situation we're dealing with as far as the COVID-19. And what viruses do, see, we've established way in the beginning that viruses are the catalyst, viruses on a weak body are the catalysts and the triggers to cancer, disease, and chronic illness. Okay. We've been living with so many different viruses in our environment and getting used to them. And so people have been managing their cancer, disease, and chronic illness relatively well with different procedures, with different immunotherapies. However, we haven't had a real aggressive, like new aggressive virus in the environment for such a long time since the AIDS virus. Yeah, we've had the Zika virus and the Ebola virus and the swine flu and the H1N1, but those were relative, there was, I mean, there was like a scare, but it wasn't to this magnitude. I mean, it was pretty much like a blip on the screen when you think about it. I mean, the Ebola virus came and went in 2014 it kind of resurfaced the last couple months or so, and then it disappeared. Um, but it wasn't so communicable. So when you have something that is airborne, that is communicable, that is very, very aggressive, it mutates fast, and you're seeing predispositions being triggered so acutely, now you have to really sit up and take notice. Like you can't ignore what's going on. I mean, you could try, you can live in your bubble and be like, hey, it's not gonna affect me because I'm an American or a Westerner and we live in an ivory tower. We don't live like the Chinese or the Asians over there. It's not a third world country, we live in a first world country. But you realize that these viruses don't discriminate. Viruses don't discriminate. If you have major predispositions or even minor predispositions, it's going to affect you. So. You know, we're relying on the different agencies and China with all of their reports as far as who's testing positive and testing negative, the ships out there on the sea, you know, oh, they tested negative. They have one ship that finally docked in Cambodia and everyone tested negative. But I'm going to tell you this, once you've been exposed to the virus, you could actually have the antibody but not test positive for it because your immune system is so strong that it's able to release the excess antibodies. So you're not gonna be harboring excess antibodies to then trigger a positive because tests, tighter tests that test for antibodies have specific conditions that if you reach a certain condition of how many antibodies that are being expressed in the body, then it will trigger a positive or a negative, no different than a drug test, okay? They wanna see recent exposure and then how well your body is adapting. And when someone tests negative for any virus, it means that they've adapted to that environment because the virus is already in the environment, you guys. I mean, it's not like, you know, one area of the country is not going to be affected. No, everybody is going to be affected. It's just a matter of how your body responds to the virus in your environment and whether or not you're going to trigger a positive or a negative if somebody tests for it and if those tests are relatively reliable. So you just have to assume that you've been exposed to it. You just don't have the symptoms or the symptoms are like the flu virus. And if people go and get tested for the flu and they come up positive, they're most likely not going to test for the COVID-19, the coronavirus, because there's no point. We can just chalk it up to the flu. You have the flu and just go and take your 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 electrolytes, go home and rest. There really is no antibiotic in the world that's gonna help you. Maybe just relieve your symptoms, but once you relieve your symptoms, you're suppressing your immune system to then make your body weaker, to then ravage your body even more when another virus comes into the environment because this coronavirus and other viruses out there do mutate. And when you have viruses put together, they do mutate and then they create another strain. And this is why you have so many different vaccines with 
from the base strain of like the measles, the influenza, hepatitis, <clears throat> A, B, C, D, and F, G. So that's the whole point of the vaccine is the fact that viruses do mutate in a population that keeps getting sick and keeps mutating these strains on a continuous basis. So this thing with jelly juice and this thing with me changing the salt is so appropriate because the pink salt is, I mean, hey, it's great for cooking, it's good for taste, yes, but it has a lot of trace minerals, which we have, yes, we have convinced people, which, you know, you need mineral, minerals, but we have convinced people that, yes, you need minerals, of course you do. But remember, you get minerals in the tap water, you get minerals in the cabbage and kale, you get minerals in your environment. And so having then a double dose of minerals in the salt only then just compounds how much more minerals your body has to work through with an already over mineralized body because you have imbalances. And so really those trace minerals in the pink salt are actually stagnating the energy of what you could get from the sodium chloride. So I've noticed since changing the salt and having that meme that I put up as far as a new recipe with the white salt shakers and everything, some people were reacting very adversely just as far as them seeing the change in the salt. They're like, oh, hell no, or just completely coming unglued with the fact that I was changing salt and they can't figure out why. Remember, it stems to the original fear, which is, oh my God, the salt is so poisonous. It's not poisonous. The salt isn't poisonous. What it is, is an energizing force on bodies that are very compromised. Now, the thing why people have deemed salt, white salt, table salt, so dangerous is because we have people with cardiovascular issues. When you have 48% of people in America with cardiovascular issues and they're, they have malabsorption, leaky gut, okay, they're not absorbing the proper minerals and the nutrients to be able to then fix the weaknesses in their heart, in their vital organs, in their lungs, or kidneys, or brain, and all of that. So when you are salting your food and you already have imbalances in your fatty acids, amino acids, prohormones, and minerals, what, what the salt does, it energizes the immune system to go and try to fix the issues in the body and it will steal resources from the hair, skin, and nails, as well as try to, well, yeah, hair, skin, and nails and bones and try to fix the weaknesses. And then what happens is when you don't have enough of those resources because the malabsorption is that severe and the damage to your heart and your brain and your lungs and all of that and your kidneys are that severe, then the salts can be trying to uh, defibrillize you and you won't have enough minerals and nutrients to fix the issues. And then that's when people die. They don't have enough electrolytes in their body to then carry the blood through because of all the antibodies that are clogging up the heart and all the antibodies clogging up the lungs and the kidneys and all of the different areas. And so this is why they have told people to stay away from salt because they have weaknesses, they have imbalances, and they don't want the system to be energized by this pure energy, okay? And so that's why there's the fear around the salt. So of course, when I change the pink salt, which is a more healthier salt relative to the industry that's trying to be healthy, what they're doing is they're saying this has less sodium chloride, more minerals, so you don't have as much of the energizing force. Because remember, what healthy is, is the determination of what healthy is is based upon people with predispositions. When someone says something is healthier over something else, you're actually getting their projection of their imbalances. Who are they to determine that this salt is healthier than this salt? Oh, because they don't want to feel the healing energy. They don't want to feel the energy from the salt because they don't have what it takes to be able to handle the healing process. Because salt is like turning on your electric fence and then you should have what you need to be able to fix the issues, to reinforce your arsenal. But most people don't have what they need or have what it takes to be able to handle the healing energy or the energy of the salt. And they don't have the right nutrients in the body to be able to be activated properly. And so this is why doctors and holistic professionals recommend low sodium diets or no sodium diets. Well, they don't say no sodium because you can't live without salt or you're inert. So I was thinking something last night and I don't I like in the middle of like my sleep or when I wake up sometimes just kind of half-heartedly I'm thinking these things about the, the white salt 
And it's like, you know, with the whole thing with the J juice, okay? When you make the white salt with the J juice, it's going to be so salty, which means that, yeah, you're going to win. So you're going to almost think it's undrinkable, but it is drinkable. You can do little shots at a time because a little will go a long way with the white salt. You can add water to it if you want, but still keep to the ratios. But try little shots. No, you're not going to be doing a gallon a day with the white salt. Okay, you could probably do a gallon a day with the pink salt. And some people will do that because they want to sort of like just introduce the J juice and the salt to their diet on a more of a chill out basis. But remember, we're dealing with now a more aggressive environment, which is going to call for more aggressive energy to heal. Okay. And so this is why we're stepping it up. And just, it's not like I just planned this. I mean, it just came out of nowhere because the universe is letting me know that something is aggressive out there, like this COVID, COVID-19, which is the coronavirus, and it's super, super aggressive. Most of you are going to get hit and not all of you are going to survive because you have so many predispositions or you will be so under the weather that you might trigger cancer because when you have so many weaknesses in the body, viruses on a weak body will eventually take it over and that's when cancer gets triggered. You have to know what cancer is, is viruses on a weak body. When someone has been exposed to viruses on a strong body, it's only gonna upgrade them. But on a weak body, they will get cancer disease, chronic illness, and even death. Because that's what death is, is death when you have too many antibodies that, or, that will override the nutrients and the minerals and the working systems. Okay, when you have too many antibody accumulation, overload, um, antibody uh, acquisition, that's when you start triggering heart attacks that people don't survive from. That's when you start triggering pneumonic type of symptoms like uh, pneumonia. That's when you trigger brain aneurysms. That's when you trigger strokes, okay? Because you have so many antibodies that your body isn't releasing and you're holding on to fatty acids, amino acids, pro hormones and minerals, and you're not releasing the excess and you have major, major holes in your gut. So you're not even absorbing what you need. And so you're kind of a sitting duck. Okay. And so what's going on in China is eventually going to come out over here. We're seeing it already happen in people who are elderly. We're seeing kids right now dropping like flies. There's going to be another wave of the flu that it's gonna be backed up by the coronavirus because it's already out there. I felt the I felt the environment, okay? The environment's very aggressive. So, um, so I wrote like heat, energy, flame, no flame, pain, no pain. See, when you're switching from the pink salt to the white salt, now you're getting more heat, you're getting more energy, okay? You're getting more flame from the white salt paired with the cabbage and the kale. You may not take as much because it is a very highly energetic drink at this point. And so you're gonna see waterfalls happen faster. You're gonna see healing happen faster. You're gonna see, yeah, pain, because remember pain is healing. And so, you know, what I would do is use the pink salt to season your food and then use the white salt for the jelly juice and you drink it slowly. Cause in that little meme, that little illustration that I did on my Facebook, it says, drink it slowly so you can introduce yourself to the energy. Cause it's very energetic. No different than when you put so much sugar in your coffee and you wince cause it's too sweet. When you have a lot of salt, you're gonna wince. But remember the balancing force of any kind of salt is water, but you're going to see the, the fatty acids be dissolved and basically pushed out your ass. So those of you that are extremely overweight, if you stay on the J-Juice and you deal with the healing, it's not going to be fun. You're going to be feverish. You're going to be just headaches. You're going to have aches everywhere because your body is now finally going to heal. But you will start seeing the weight drop off, the skin tighten. You will start seeing mental clarity. You will start seeing, and you will be able to release the excess um antibodies from the exposure to the COVID-19 coronavirus, Nobel coronavirus. COVID-19 is basically the, the WHO's scientific term for coronavirus. Okay. But you know, if you're, if you want to protect yourself from the ravages of this new virus in the environment, you have to strengthen your body. The jelly juice is not some guard against just the one virus. It's not just some little thing that you take to see if you do it temporarily so you can protect yourself. And no, it's like you have to strengthen everything in your body. 
Okay, so don't even worry about false positives, false negatives, and you're watching the news and you're part of these different groups that are tracking the, the ships and the quarantine. The people are doing quarantine for 14 days. It's not gonna make a difference. Viruses will have incubation periods for a day, an hour, or for years and months. So even though you've been in quarantine for 14 days, but you were in a province or in an area where there was a coronavirus and it's very airborne, you've been exposed, you've been exposed. So now it's up to you to strengthen your body so you don't have any antibody from any virus you've ever been exposed to start doubling and tripling. Because it's not just the COVID-19 that you have to worry about, it's like the herpes, it's the HPV, it's the hep A, it's the AIDS, it's all the different viruses that you've ever been exposed to. The influenza, I mean, when you start seeing people get diagnosed with cancer, what is that from? It's from the viruses they've been exposed to. When you see people with diagnoses of, of, of every type of issue, whether it's diabetes all the way to aging, all the way to, to autoimmune disorders, all the way to Parkinson's, every single cancer disease, chronic illness, autoimmunity is based upon viruses on a weak body. And this new virus is going to tip the scales because when you have 48% of the U.S. with cardiovascular issues, you're going to start seeing people trigger events. Some will survive because they have enough of what it takes, but they may not be lucky next time. Others will not survive the first time, or this could be their third time. Okay? My husband and I have been dealing with the new environment. He's been home sick for a week, and that's not like him. He's been having diarrhea, and he's been you know, just really chill, kind of out of breath a little bit. But he's okay but it's gonna take him down a notch. And he's a strong dude. But imagine someone that has diagnosis of the yin yang that's taking massive amounts of medication and they get exposed to something like this. Holy shit. That's when people go to the ER. That's when people start, yeah, I mean, already you're seeing people in your families. People have been, people have passed away. Already hanging by a string. Okay, you guys, you gotta take this seriously. So this is why I changed the salt, not because of really I knew this. I, the reason why I changed the salt in the beginning was because I couldn't trust that we had, you know, any kind of, uh, what is it? We could depend upon global trade because of the whole coronavirus and Pakistan, because that's where the salt or the, the pink salt came from was Pakistan and that we should be buying local. And then I'm like, hold on a second. What if, if sodium chloride is what we're after and I have sodium chloride here for seven dollars and twenty five cents, but then I'm getting minerals in the air and the food and the water and there's 86 minerals in the pink salt, but I have minerals in my freaking tap water. I have minerals in my cabbage and kale. I have minerals in the chemtrails. I'm getting uh, exposed to radiation on a continuous basis that my body can handle from the Wi-Fi. When you need a certain amount of radiation with electrons and neutrons and protons and all that stuff. Okay, so why would I be paying a, such a, a large amount of money for minerals that I already get here from somewhere over there? And I have Morton Salt Company, sodium chloride. I have the public salt company that gets the salt from these mines that I can get for $7.25 for a 50 pound bag. Why the hell am I paying $20 from Amazon? for a five pound bag of basically sodium chloride and 2% minerals. So I'm paying twice. That's why we don't distill water because you're taking minerals out that you're only putting back in. So I've made it to where it makes more sense to do straight up white salt. It'll be more energetic and definitely saltier. It's not gonna taste good, but it doesn't taste good anyways. Okay, you know, somebody said on my, on my business page, well, I put a bunch of white salt in my soup and it tasted horrible, so I threw the soup out. Big freaking deal. If you're not taking it, if you are afraid, if you don't like the taste of the white salt, you're probably not drinking the J-juice at the level that you should anyways. If that's your argument of why you don't want to switch from the pink salt to the white salt, you're probably not drinking the J-juice at the level that you should. Because let me tell you, when you go to the white salt, yes, it's going to be saltier. You're, there's ways to deal with that, doing tiny shots or diluting a little bit to make it easier, whatever, but you're still getting it, okay? And you will get the healing, the, the waterfalls and the healing. Because remember, 
when we went from one teaspoon of pink salt or Celtic sea salt to one tablespoon, we were seeing the aggressive healing process and the waterfalls come much faster. So imagine going from one teaspoon of Celtic or pink salt to one tablespoon with the difference in the healing and the waterfall triggers, and then going to one tablespoon of strict sodium chloride, no minerals to weigh us down. Because remember, heavy metal toxicity is where it stops the energy in all of your organs. It doesn't stop energy, but it, it stagnates the energy when you have too many heavy metals in your body. So now we've taken out the middleman. You're getting the other minerals, the trace minerals in your cabbage and kale and water. Now you're getting straight up white sodium chloride. Now you're getting an energy force that is bar none that is going to be able to match the environment, how aggressive the environment is at this point. And it's very aggressive with the fear, with the viruses, with the holy shit, the global pandemics, the, the economic, you know, um, uh, triggers or the economic issues that we're going to be seeing from this fall, economic fallout, you know, now switching from pink salt to white salt is now very appropriate. Now people are like, oh, the anti-caking agent, it's just minerals. Ferrous cyanide is just minerals. Okay, if it was 99% ferrous cyanide and 1% sodium, yeah, you should be concerned. But if it's 99% sodium chloride and 1% minerals, you're okay. It's no different than taking the pink salt. It's not going to taste as good because pink salt and Celtic salt and all the different colored salts are like all about taste, but they take away the sodium chloride. You're getting less sodium chloride. Though I was still able to heal, okay, on the pink salt, but could have could it have been faster could i have cut down my healing time in half and that's what you have to ask yourself if you stay with the pink salt your healing process is going to be dragged out longer and longer why not go straight to the horse's mouth why not get straight to the point and have your healing process be faster waterfalls come faster healing process comes faster you know you getting out of this this craziness you know, and not get feed into it too much, but you want to warn your friends and family, but you want to be the example. Why not have that come at you faster? But you have to get over the taste, the fear, the, 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 the pain. Yeah, you're going to have to deal with pain, but you've earned it. You've let yourself go to such an extent that now you have to cycle back and bring your body back to what it was supposed to be, whatever it was supposed to be, but certainly not where you are now because some of you are carrying so much imbalances. It's causing, it's causing you to be a sitting duck in this new environment. We are in a global reset in body, mind, and spirit and financially we're in a global reset. And so either you're going to be able to, 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 adapt to it or you're going to try to resist it and then succumb to it okay i am finally off of the block that facebook put me on as far as the groups because there was a video from korea that i posted that triggered that block and it was a pretty trippy video from north korea so you know right now facebook is censoring a lot of stuff which is fine you really have to worry about your community yeah they're going to be doing quarantines the the northern command is going to be working on some kind of something as far as the next couple of weeks when we're going to be hit with so many people when you only have five or six hundred beds in a hospital okay and you have a community of a hundred thousand you think 500 beds in a hospital is going to be enough to handle 48 percent of your community dealing with with uh heart attack triggers this is going to be insane when i was in the air national guard and we were doing summer camp summer games operation readiness operation inspection operation readiness inspection and operation readiness exercise because we'd always you know i would go once a, once a month one weekend a month two weeks in the summer we would be doing chem warfare exercises I'd be wearing a chem warfare suit, trying to do my job in a chem warfare outfit. Why the hell? Well, I was thinking that because we're going to go over to Iraq and Iran and they're going to do biological warfare. But I'm like, hold on a second. Does Iraq and Iran have biological warfare? I mean, yeah, I mean, we're taking we're giving our, our guys anthrax shots because, yeah, that's a possibility. But uh, no, maybe it's because of this. 
maybe they already knew that there was going to be something being released in the future by who i don't know you know there's always intelligence are we the ones that are causing it or is somebody else and we kind of got wind of it and that's going to happen in the future i have no idea i'm not even going to speculate who is the one that's going to be actually triggering but i was in the air the california air national guard wearing the chem warfare suits and they were really hot especially during the summer i went to st andrews bay over there at tyndall air force Base over there at you know fallon air fallon naval air station in nevada doing summer games we did summer games in california you know where we'd shooting guns and wearing chem warfare suits i mean i'm telling you shit's going down the loop and you guys have to be strong enough to handle this environment okay so you know don't fight me on the pink to the white salt don't fight me there's a reason behind it Pure white table salt is not poisonous. Why it's being demonized is because it's a pure energy force on bodies that are very, very weak, that may not have enough of what it takes to be able to handle the healing process. Because your, your body can heal itself if given the right elements and you have no weaknesses. The body can actually adapt and heal itself. But why would you have to heal yourself? Because you're always going from one environment to another. Whenever you have a change in the season, from summer to fall to winter, you're seeing more of the flu season because anytime you go through an adaptation state, your immune system and everything lowers to be able to handle the new environment. And so when I watch my dog go through adaptation from summer to fall, she starts getting fleas, okay? And she starts getting a little bit of skin issues. And so then I'm more of a, you know, aggressive and vigilant with making sure that she her immune system is supported and that we pick the fleas off of her. And then she's fine. She adapts. Her body finally adapts. The fleas, you know, are not there. But it's never a problem around the springtime. Only when it goes from very warm to very cold. That's when people have a hard time adapting. So, yes. So when you're doing the J-juice during those times from summer to fall to winter, you're going to have to really up your game because your body's going to have to go and get the support from the from the change in the season because it will affect antibodies come up from the cold the change in the in the weather um, people who are communicable who are sick will then bring up because the antibodies start multiplying and they they come to surface and people are more communicable and so then you're exposed to that if we were in like 85 degrees all year round with light trade winds just blowing across your face and there's no upset of homeostasis, no change in weather, you wouldn't see the, the, the seeds drop from the seed, you know, from the trees. You wouldn't see people having all of these health issues, okay? Um, but there's health issues like, like in Hawaii, but just because there's, there's obesity and other cancers in Hawaii. But if people were 100% healthy living in Hawaii, you wouldn't see all of the need for vaccines and for medical intervention because the weather would be calm, the bodies would be calm, homeostasis would be perfect, people would be eating food and actually getting benefit from it and putting on reserve. So in case, yeah, they go on a ship and there's more wind or something, they're able to adapt to it. Okay, let's say they go into a building that's a little bit colder, they'll be able to adapt to it. Okay, because yes, air conditioning can also cause people to have different upsets of homeostasis. People get colder in air conditioning. Okay, so that's, you know, so that's the whole point of the J-juice is to support your body to be able to handle the different adaptations. And whenever you, when you go through an adaptation process, an evolution process, it's a weakness that you have to support that the body has to heal from. But those that have diagnoses will have a harder time adapting from one environment to another, as well as adapting to a new environment, such as a new virus in the environment. Okay, so don't fight me on this, the change in salt. White table salt with an anti-caking agent is not poisonous. And so we're coming back full circle from the beginning, but now we're finally substantiating that salt is not poisonous. We've kind of softened the blow with the pink salt and you guys got introduced to the healing process with the pink salt. But now this is where the rubber meets the road. The white salt is the ultimate energy force that now you guys that are doing the J-Juice have prepared yourself for. And some of you are taking it on like Carolyn Pip Jackson. She's taking it on like, pff, hell yeah. 
okay? Because you guys know you're in, you're in for a doozy the next couple years. This de next decade is going to be insane. It's going to be insane, and you have to have the elements to match the atmosphere. And if you don't have the elements in your body to match the atmosphere, good luck. Good luck. Understand why it is I changed the salt. All right? Have a good day. Good luck to all of you. Pay attention to the news. You need to not put your head in the sand. It's time to face the music. All right, bye-bye.